know yourself yes. well. And if you are not comfortable sure. being in that situation where you might have a drink or two, like, do you feel confident in your ability to perform to the level that is demanded of you if you engage? All right, hey everybody, welcome back. We're here again. We told you we were going to have you I back know, on. I Brie. love it. I, I love it. I mean, to- look. You're in Dallas. You might get called up a lot to come back on the exactly. show. I love it. Well, and I have to say, when my husband and I were deciding between Texas and Florida, like true story, um, our biggest thing, we're like, we have so many friends in Dallas. Yeah. And that literally was one of our, our primary motivators of choosing Dallas. And it's growing. I mean, like, yes. this, the, the gang is growing <laughs> here. We're trying I mean, to get everybody we, here. Okay. So we all met via, well, you guys met through Gun TV and then yeah. we all connected even more through like social media. <laughs> And did you really think <laughs> back then, one, that we would like even have known or met each other, but we've always seen each other at, at SHOT Show and all the events that we're at, and then that we would all be living in Texas. No. So it never occurred to me we'd be living together, but it also never occurred to me how important it would be to have so many of your, like this mm-hmm. is, I feel like it's just critical time right yes. now to be surrounded by the people that just get what's going on yeah. in the yes. world. And <laughs> it, well, and that's, I think why, I mean, I, I like to, people ask me like, Oh, why did you move? And it's funny. Cause I never know my audience. So I don't know if like they're conservative or not. So I know I, careful with what I say or how I say it, but I'm always like, well, we kind of escaped New York and they give <laughs> yeah. me this like perplexed look. And I'm like, well, we just, we didn't really fit in there. We'll just say that. And then you're of course, better than me. Cause every time <laughs> someone asks, I'm like freedom. <laughs> Yeah. They're like, why did you move? I'm like, freedom. And like the people who get it are like, oh, yeah. And then because some people are just kind of like, mm, you're one of them. Yeah. <laughs> get rid of it. Yeah, exactly. You because you just, you don't know. But I, I try to explain to people, I'm like, we just didn't, really didn't fit in. And, and honestly, like I said, it just, we felt like that. We felt like we were very isolated. I, ha- I know some great people in New York. Don't get me wrong. Um, politically, don't really align with us. And that's okay. I don't have an issue with that. But we felt like we just were sort of like, we were the oddballs and we didn't have that community. And mm-hmm. that was something we were looking for. And especially now that we have a daughter, it's like, I want her to have a community of people, especially women that I not only like and respect, but we, we have common ground mm-hmm. and I don't need my, every friend in my life to think like me or talk like me or believe what I believe, but to not, to live in an area where we didn't have anybody sure. that we yeah. related to, it was, we kind of started to feel it. And That's we saw the only. world through our daughter's eyes and like, well, what kind of life Speaking is that for her? Daughters, yeah, you threw out like a really big update I mean, since <laughs> we had you on the show last. So we've had Brie on a couple several of times, times. Yeah. Several times, really, at this point. And if you want to go here, Brie has an incredible, yeah, it, incredible, incredible story, story of how she got where she is in the firearm industry yeah. and, and even getting into that world, becoming a firearms instructor. If you want to listen to that, you can go back and listen. To, I forget the episode I number. Forget we'll, put the episode. we'll put in the show notes. Yes, but you can go listen to her whole story. I think we've story. had her on a couple times. Because yeah, I think yes. I know that we've talked about like range etiquette with you. We yeah. sh- you shared your story. There's been some other. So yeah, we did but- a really great. It was YWLS that you really got yeah. to do a yes. deep dive into getting to know Brie and why she's so special and so special to us. And so go and listen to that episode because I think when you give us the update now as to what's been going on yeah. in your life, it's just going to make so much more sense. So oh so my catch us up. So yes, um, it's funny. Like I. I, and I say this with reservation because I never want anybody to think, and I don't want to even tell myself that like I wasn't doing things as like a backup plan. I don't want it to ever seem like that. But full transparency, like I always knew I wanted to be a mom. Like that was just like a given. Um, I at the time I was focused, you know, solely on acting, and I wanted to be a mom. Those are my two goals in life. And then as as time went on, and as as what we talked about in my last episode or one of the other episodes, that like it was very difficult. My I was previously married. My first husband passed away when we were trying to have a family, which was very traumatic. And then it, you know I continued to have that dream of being a, a mother, but as the older I got, the more difficult it became. So I, I kind of got to a point where I sort of surrendered to, well, maybe it's going to happen. Maybe it won't. And I filled my life with other interests, other passions, thinking that like, well, that's fine. It's again, it's, it's not, it wasn't the plan that I had set out in life, but it was what I was mm-hmm. given and I embraced it and I loved it and I was thankful for it. Flash forward. Uh, I'm happy to say after 10 years, I mean, it was like literally a 10 year miracle. I have a little girl yeah, and she is the freaking cutest. <laughs> yes. And I like, it's changed 
everything about how I look at life, like everything. And I know I kind of expected that to happen, but I think my husband probably expected it even more than, than I saw coming. Because I, I think, you know, now I realize like that was a 10 year emotional, not only physical, but emotional investment in this idea, this dream of having a child and being a mom. And now that she's here, I knew I could tell that I was shifting in the way I saw things when I was pregnant. That that was a given. I could start to see how I was probably going to adjust how I lived after she arrived. And, you know, truth be known, like that is absolutely what's happened. Mm -hmm. Like my life has totally shifted since she's been here. It's got me rethinking a lot of what I'm doing. Everything that I do on my day to day is as a result of thinking of how she fits into that, Mm -hmm. which has been an interesting challenge. And you know, (laughs) it's like a business owner and a mom, like it's a lot of juggling yeah. mm-hmm. and you, you prioritize differently. You know, I'm not, not only mom, but I'm still a wife. So I, my husband needs just as much as attention as my daughter and our dogs and everybody <laughs> else. So it's, it's a, it's an interesting position to be in. It's a problem. It's not really a problem. It's, it's a challenge we'll say yeah. that I'm very grateful for yeah. because I feel like I've waited 10 years to get to this challenge. I welcome it. Um, so it, it is, it's been an interesting journey to now like see how this chapter of my life fits into the whole story. Sure. Well, so. like I think that's something interesting because we both, or not we both, but you both, you know, bo- had challenges becoming pregnant and yeah. having, and now you both have beautiful, beautiful babies. And I'm so lucky because I get to spoil them. <laughs> so, But like, how is that, you know, pre-babies, you know, we, we all come together because we had the same self-reliant mindset. You know, we both, you know, we all wanted to be empowered. We all wanted to help women and personal safety was very important, Mm -hmm. important to us in our daily life. And how has that mindset in that kind of lifestyle now that you guys are both moms and, you know, not that, you know, boys can kind of handle themselves, you know, I know they need, they need, they need, you know, to be taught and loved and all that. But, you know, with both of you having daughters and seeing how the world is changing and moving, like, how is that mindset of, of being a mom, just you thinking about your own personal safety and how to kind of bring that into your daughter's life, even at such a young age, but also how you guys have shifted y- yeah. you, your own personal safety just in living your daily life, because I feel like that's a hard, I was always taught when I was little, you know, you know, you don't talk to strangers, like those kinds of things. And I assume that you have to start those conversations, no matter how young they are, because I'm Mm -hmm. sure that stuff starts, you've got to start, right? Well, and it's hard. It's like a weird balance because like, she's, our daughter is 10 and a half months. So she's at this age where like, we don't necessarily want her to be afraid of people, you know? So we don't, we didn't, you know, we were trying to be cautious about not letting her be fearful of people. So she's super friendly and she knows no stranger, which on one hand is sweet and cute and it's, it's very innocent, (laughs) but there will come a time where that conversation has to occur Mm -hmm. that it's like, you can't be that. Unfortunately, you can't be that way with everybody. Now the, I think the blessing, and I remember this even as, as a child myself and maybe a couple of situations that I was in as a kid that I remember thinking, like, I remember my mindset then where you have, kids have great instincts. Mm -hmm. And I think if you can teach your child to have good instincts and to listen to that instinct, Mm -hmm. that makes a difference. Like I remember when I was about, I must've been about like 10, nine or 10 years old and I'll never forget it. But I was, I was waiting for my grandfather. He he usually picked me up at school, you know, after school and right next door to our school was a little town library. So I would go to the library and entertain myself and my grandfather would pick me up sometimes. And I remember there was a woman. Now I couldn't guarantee a hundred percent that she was about to do something terrible but my instinct was something was not right about this. She kept wanting me to help her get her books huh. out of the back seat of her car. And I just, I, I had a weird instinct. And I was like, you know, I don't, like, I don't, something's not yeah. right here. And I kept saying no. And I was trying to be polite. And she, of course, she tried to do the whole thing. Oh, well, you're, you're being a little brat. You're not being nice. You're not being helpful or whatever. And I, I just thought something's not right. But what was weird is that after all of this exchange and then me not helping her get her books, she got in her car and she left. Hmm. Again, I don't know 100% sure, where sure. that was going, but I knew enough that something is wrong. And I think that's, if I if I have anything that I learned from that, that experience mm-hmm. of my own, that when my daughter is old enough, I want to teach her to trust her instincts because yeah. I think that is something that we miss. I think sure. a lot of times we, we, you know, we especially as women, we second guess ourselves. Yeah. We mm-hmm. think they're like, no, I'm being, I'm being irrational. I'm being crazy. No, listen to your yep. gut because mm-hmm. chances are it's probably right. We, we've kind of shifted 
in that thinking. So, I mean, obviously like we're in the South, both my dad and my husband's father were in the ministry. So we were always told, you know, the Christian thing to do is to look at everybody in the eye, smile, say hi, be as kind as, as possible. And I remember when we had my son first, I was like, you know what? There's something to, if he doesn't want to say hi, or he doesn't want to go to somebody, <laughs> we said from the very beginning, like, we're not forcing that. Yep. I'm not forcing it. I'm sorry. Like I even have some of my friends, like my son won't go to them. Right. Nothing about the, you know, like there's nothing <laughs> wrong, but I've told Drew, I'm like, Hey, let's not force it. Yeah. You know, it, let's let him figure out and realize like, let, let's let him get comfortable in the situation and assess. Cause my son is the assessor. He has to observe. He has to, that's good. And I think, and I think that's good that a two-year-old is learning that. So I'm like, instead of, cause our instinct is to force him to sure. do it. Like, yeah. be you're nice, like, oh, be these kind. Are, these, be, yeah. These, these, these are, our are family. These are our friends. Like you nope. need to make uh-huh. sure that you're, you know, loving on them. And like, these are your people. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's, I, I want them to see like, you can trust our judgment, you know, and yeah. we're not going to put you in a dangerous situation, but like you, he's got to come to that mm-hmm. knowledge on, on his own. And so I yeah. think it's like dialing into our kids. Now I have no idea what my daughter is going to be like. She's a little miss social butterfly. So she may not have <laughs> that same, like, it's going to be different how we approach yeah. both of them. But I think just, you know, we start with little things um, from situational awareness. Like right now we'll go on walks and I'm like, okay, you know, my son, tell me, every water hose you find. Mm -hmm. And I want him to point out and find the water hoses. And it's not because I'm like, let's learn situational awareness. I want you to be aware of your surroundings. It's like, let's start getting in the mindset of you focusing and finding things Things, Mm -hmm. that are in your surroundings. And I want your mindset to just start getting in that place. And so that's kind of some of the things that we're yeah, I'm just well, realizing it's more my parents. I don't remember them ever being like intentional about those kind mm-hmm. of things well, growing I, up necessarily. I think too, like piggybacking on that, not only is the situational awareness of our children and what we kind of instill with them at a young age, but I also now as a parent, it's I never I mean, not that I didn't pay attention before, but I'm really paying attention to Amber Alerts now. Mm-hmm. There's such an increasing amount of Amber Alerts that it makes the hair on the back of my neck go up. And that's the other thing too. I think as parents, you know, we live in a very busy world and we have lots of distractions where there's cell phones. And and when there wasn't a child, I used to always tell people like, don't be distracted Mm -hmm. by your cell phone. Like don't have your head buried in it, whether Mm -hmm. you're walking, you're sitting in your car in the parking lot, playing on your phone. Now with a child, it's even more so. Don't have those distractions because it only takes a moment for someone to take your child. And like, that's my new thing now. Uh That's the new focus. Like, it's not even about me and my own safety. Like, it's my primary focus now is on her and her safety. Because, you know, I I, I don't know the statistic, but I remember reading an article and it was like shocking that basically if, if the perpetrator takes that child and they're able to leave, the chances of you retrieving that child are very slim to nil. Yeah. So, you know, that's the other thing too. If, if, God forbid you're in that situation. No. You need to know how to take action quickly to stop them and neutralize them before they leave. Mm-hmm. Because if you can't, it's it's very grim. Uh-huh. And that, I mean, that's a whole other level of self-awareness that I, I've never thought about before. And, and just being that in tune with what's going on yep. in your environment, mm-hmm. reading people, you know, and I'm sorry, like at this point, I'm like, I don't care if I'm rude. I don't, no. I don't intentionally mean to be rude, but like, if I'm not comfortable around you, I am absolutely going to get my child away from you. Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Like whether you're offended by that or not, I don't really care. (laughs) Your 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 priority being offended is is not my concern. Is your daughter, is your your children, is your priority. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like that. And you have to just be okay with that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's something too that I'm, I'm realizing now as a parent that it's just things happen very quickly. And if you are not prepared for Mm -hmm. that moment, like, you know, you could very well lose your child. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, what about carrying and having a baby? Because we were oh my gosh, like, it's a challenge. Both of you. So you know, I love I love Malin. I love I love Eleanor, and I want to carry and snuggle and smother them with so much love as much as possible. But like today, when I was holding Malin, she's and because she's got also gotten bigger and a lot more, like she's moving a little bit yeah. more. And both, I believe, well, I know that um, Malin is crawling and Ellie is I'm about to walk. Yeah. 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 So she stuck her foot like right in my waistband, and I was like. <laughs> It's a good thing I don't have my gun on today because she would have been like right on my grip of my gun. And I was like, Brie, what, what do you do? I'm, I would have, you know, I'm just switching sides because 
Yeah. But what are you guys doing in terms of like caring when you actually also have to carry mm. your baby? It's it's a challenge. I got to be honest. And I, I told my husband, I was like, I am all about like transparency because I don't ever want to present myself in a way that is not truthful because it, you know, that doesn't help people. The truth helps people. Mm -hmm. And I got to be honest, like two things, moving to a brand new state where I don't know all the local laws when it comes to firearms. Mm -hmm. Like that's first and foremost, like I know we have constitutional carry here. That's amazing. It's awesome. That doesn't negate the fact that I need to know what the local laws mm -hmm. are. That's really important. So he and I are in that process of educating ourselves so that when we, as we carry, like we know what those laws right. are mm -hmm. like that, that should be everyone's first, you know, just awareness. Um, but yes, carrying with the child, you know, during pregnancy, there was the fear of like, oh my gosh, I'm carrying a human being in me. Like I, I, it's hard to navigate where is a safe place for me to carry yep. that I don't feel well, like I'm growing the baby. Your baby, your baby. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even going to kid you. I had someone and I mean, not to put down guys, but I was like, oh, this is a bad piece of advice. I actually had a gentleman suggest that I should get the, the, you know, the bra holster. Like the flashbang. Oh, yeah. And I was like, uh, no, muzzle like pointing it. right down yeah. at my child. Probably not a good idea. Just going to go on record there. But our body, uh, your body during, like our bodies as women without being pregnant fluctuate and change all the exactly. time. Exactly. So, so when you have a growing human being in your body that not only changes your stomach, it's changing like almost everything, everything. about your body. So no. So that was, that was not a piece of advice that I followed, needless to say. <laughs> um, but even now as, you know, she's at an age where she's obsessed with my purse. Uh -huh. She will pull everything out of my purse. Things that I think were tucked away, zipped up, out of sight, she will find. And she likes to play with it. So, like, of course, like, at this point, there is going to be no kind no, of purse yeah. carry because I'm petrified. Yeah. And when, you know, it's nice to say that we can't be distracted. But bottom line is there are going to be those moments where we are distracted. Yeah. We cannot be in hyper alert every second no, of our lives. Right. And that one moment that you're not is when something bad mm -hmm. happens. Yep. So that's off the table. And then, like you said, even with carrying on the person, which is what I always advocate, I always carry appendix. Yeah. Right now, that's difficult because between nursing her, which yeah. so she's laying right there, <laughs> and or her just physically exploring like as I'm carrying her, and in my my dominant side, the, the the side that I would shoot on is also the side that I'm most comfortable you carrying. Yes, right. Uh -huh. So I think one of the things that I want to think about is training myself physically at the gym to strengthen my non-dominant side. So at the very least, because also too, like think about it. If you're in a situation where you have to draw from fire and you're carrying or draw from holster rather, and you're carrying her, a child, like you, it's not going to work if right. you're carrying mm -hmm. on the side that you actually carry yep. your firearm. So I, I definitely need to get a little bit more strength training on my non-dominant side. So at the very least I can carry her on that side mm -hmm. if I have to ever draw from holster when we get to that point. But again, like it has been a real big challenge. And then coming to Dallas, and as you know, I know you style metacho, you talk a lot about fashion and carrying. It is 107 degrees out. Like, I mean, it we're, is we're just not leaving the house these days. So <laughs> but I think too that go I know I know what you're you're talking about. And I think we we we've talked about this at lunch and you know we are in the gun industry, we promote carrying, you know, you have an entire clothing line. I'm talking about, you know, how you can conceal carry, not sacrifice your style. You're a proponent for women to carry guns. You know, yes, we promote this lifestyle and we believe living the lifestyle, but at the same time, as women, you don't have to be carrying every second of every single day. And or be just, shamed if you yes. don't. Yes. Yeah, because that's, that's the, the thing. thing. Like, yes, I had a person at YWLS actually. Like we were at an influencer party, and I don't even know. Who, I don't even know who this person was, but he came out to. We we're inside. We're at the hotel. Like we're we're all in like really nice dresses. And mind you, it's full security. Yeah, they right? have a full security and staff. He came out to me and was like, "Are you carrying?" And I'm like, well, "Who are you?" First off, I have right. no idea who who you are. Like why? And I was like, "Actually, no, I'm not." He's like, "Huh?" And I'm like, huh, what? And he's like, well, that's what you promote on your your social and then, media. And I'm like, you're right, I do. But like, there are times yes. when I I don't carry. Right. And, and I think oh, and you're, you're if you're drinking, you're also being social, right, and you're drinking points like about being responsible. And also, you yeah. know, there is nothing wrong with if you decide not to carry. And there's nothing wrong if. I don't know. I want to wear a dress and I'm not going to carry. It's not the end of the world. Yes. Like we have events that we're going to that either require us to dress a certain way. And I'm not saying that you, you couldn't purse carry, but just 
it's okay. It's okay. And, yeah. and I think that's the issue. I think there's a lot of shaming in our culture of, you know, oh, well, you can only be one way or the other. And it's like, no, there are circumstances that might change that. Yeah. Again, like if you're out and you're at an event and you might be drinking, like that's- I like, I want to sometimes, I might want to have a cocktail. So yeah. let me give you an example. Most most police, at least the police departments that I'm, I've worked with, that I'm familiar with, if you carry off duty and you get involved in an off duty shooting, and even if you're completely justified, they generally will make you do um, like a toxicology. Like they will see if you were drinking mm-hmm. at that point, because that is a factor. Because most mm-hmm. most of the time, I mean, generally every state, you are not allowed to be drinking. You're not under the influence and operating a firearm. So like, you can't in Texas. There is no like. <laughs> see, there is, this well, is well. I mean, there's no <laughs> legal, there's no like limit, like there's a legal limit yes. to drive, you know, like they have, a, they have set limits, right. but they don't actually have a set limit. Oh, that's interesting. For alcohol prior to carrying a wow. firearm. So you see, this is to, why we learned. Yeah. Yeah. So like, so you just need to be, yeah. you know, personally But I think again, yeah, when we go back to know yourself yes. well, and if you are not comfortable sure. being in that situation where you might have a drink or two. Like, do you feel confident in your ability to perform to the level that is demanded of you if you engage? Mm -hmm. Or is your best course of action being a good witness? There's nothing wrong with being a good witness. That that has value in itself. I I never thought about that. Like, that's that's great. But, you know, self-awareness, self-reliance, like, it could sometimes just mean you are a very good witness. Taking in all the information, getting a good description of the perpetrator, knowing what they're wearing, knowing where they they kind of ran off to, the situation. If there is a good guy in that shooting, that might help their case. Mm-hmm. So that's the situation where like, okay, you may not be caring in that event, but that's okay. If something happens, you still have value. You yeah. still have, there's something that you can contribute that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be carrying a firearm. Yeah. yeah. I never thought about that. I think that's a, such a great point. That is a really great point, actually. Yeah. Because think, I mean, look, if you are that person, this, this Dickin kid that, you know, just went through the, the mall shooting, you know, a few mm-hmm. weeks back or whatever. Think about that situation where, you know, yes, he was he was in the right. All of his shots were good. Like, you know, he did what he needed to do and it it had a very good result. But not every state, not every situation is the same. So if you have someone who gets involved in a shooting like that, and even though they they got the bad guy, they were totally in the right by most of our definitions, if they are facing that civil case, that civil lawsuit, your testimony as a witness might be the thing that makes mm-hmm. the situation go one way or the other. And I think that's where people forget that. It's like, not everybody at the party needs to be the hero. Yeah. Like, it, exactly. it's not, like, we don't want that many. Like, it, like the whole idea of, like, too many cooks in the kitchen. Sure. We don't want a lot of crossfire. Mm-hmm. We don't want a chaos. Like, there's going to be a point person, and there's going to be all the others that either help guide people to mm-hmm. safety. They help, you know, applying tourniquets. Yeah. They become good witnesses. Like, Everybody plays their part. Not everybody has to be the person behind the gun. Yeah. And I think that's what we would miss. And that's why going back to this whole idea, like, it's okay. There's no shame in not caring 24-7. Do I advocate caring as much as you can? Yes. But that may have limits. Mm -hmm. However you define what those limits are. There's no shame in that. And that's totally fine. I love that. I do (laughs) love that. That that was perfect. Well, because then you're not hypocritical. Right. Yes. And uh, we... We're, we're about that. I mean, like living as authentically yeah. as possible. We don't want to be, be hypocrites, but you're right. I mean, at some point, sometimes it just might not work for what yeah. you're doing that day. Yeah. Or let's right. be honest, maybe you just forgot. Yeah. You're just a, a mom that, you know, <laughs> right. sometimes you just I mean, just you guys forget. have major, major <laughs> other priorities in your head. And like, I think to also being a woman, like there's some times of the month that I'm sorry, <laughs> I've got an extra five pounds of like water, like, and I'm just like... I just can't. Oh, it's, I thought you were going to go with like extra times a month. I'm like God. super aggro. <laughs> no, I'm no, a little on edge. That too. But you know, when know I'm like thyself. super bloated that I put on a gun and I'm just like within it's five minutes, yeah. I'm like, I can't do anything because all I can think about is how this is just insanely yeah. uncomfortable. And it's just my <laughs> pants don't fit to begin with at that point. So it's just like, it's, it's a whole thing. And I yeah. think we, we need to give ourselves as women grace. And when we decide yes. to enter this lifestyle and are living it, that it's okay. Yeah. You don't have to be. And there's a lot of ways into to craziness of, of, of yeah. being shamed to like, Oh, you don't no. carry or you don't do this or you don't do that. No. And there's a, there's, like I said, there's a lot of ways to be 
self-reliant and exactly. efficient and not everything involves, you know, a firearm. Yeah. It, there's just, there's so many different things that we can do to help better safeguard ourselves, even if it's just being, like you said, situationally mm -hmm. aware. Um, there's other tools that we can use. There's other ways that we can be an asset to a situation that doesn't involve a firearm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, um, that's, this is neat. Like this kind of conversation, like the practicality, yeah. uh, we need more practical thinking yes. people in our <laughs> industry. <laughs> we don't need like Instagram warriors that like, no, you we know, really don't. Take this it's my picture. way or the highway. Yeah. Like oh, you yeah. suck if you don't, you know, but we can have carry a whole this way. Another, we'll have a whole nother episode talking about the Instagram warriors and all that stuff. <laughs> I feel like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, this was awesome, Brie. Thank you so much. I'm oh, so yeah. glad that now that um, you both have little girls, I have somebody to give my shoe collection a bag collection. Oh my to. gosh! I'm gonna fight over it. Yes. I want ATMs, no batons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or I'll just share them. We'll share. I'll take you this. Yes, this exactly. Week. We'll, we'll just you know when my when God has bigger plans for me at that time, it'll just be you guys can have it's all to you. Free for all. <laughs> it's all to you. It's all to you. Hopefully, you train them though. They want your gun collection. Like, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, there's that. It'll just too. be like a here's my closet once I get like there a sweet closet bill, yeah. and then that'll be well, Brie. Thank you so much. Let of everyone course. know where they can find you. Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, all over social media, I'm still, you know, it's funny. I, I'm, I'm now that I'm in Texas, I feel like I need to start getting back into things. <laughs> I took, I gotta be honest, I took a little bit of a break with being a mom. It's yep. uh, my priorities, priorities okay. were a little different. Yeah. Um, but on Instagram, I'm tactic out NYC, which I still have to figure out <laughs> how I'm going to rebrand, if we will, because I clearly don't live in New York anymore. Um, but tactic. NYC, and then also I have a website tacticalinc.com, and then of course on Facebook as Tactical Inc. as well. So. Love it, love it. We love having you here. Oh, thank you. I love coming. Well, just this our community you again. is yes. growing, and we love it. We love being in Texas, and yeah. it's just amazing. Well, thank you guys so much for listening, mm -hmm. and we'll see you next week. Not Your Average Gun Girl Show and its related companies, Alexa Athletica LLC and Stami Tactical LLC, shares information that may potentially have legal implications for its listeners. A reminder that laws vary for each state, and we encourage listeners to seek local legal advice to understand applicable laws. Any items, services, products, and advice mentioned during the Not Your Average Gun Girl Show should be used at your own discretion in accordance with your local and state laws, and you should follow applicable manufacturer's instructions. Not Your Average Gun Girls, Alexa Athletica LLC, and Stami Tactical LLC cannot be held liable for your actions based on the information shared.